Welcome to On The Vine Podcast. I'm Chris Hempstead with Murray Asset Securities. I'm here today with uh, an old friend, colleague, and uh, and business you know partner in a sense, uh, Matt Tuttle with Tuttle Capital. Thanks for coming in, Matt. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, Matt uh, is not an accidental guest. Uh, he's been on our list to get in here for uh, a couple of months, a few months actually, I think since we started this, uh, this On The Vine Podcast series. Uh, primarily because Matt's very unique. He's been in the ETF marketplace as, and I, I just recently said I wouldn't use these words, a renegade or a, a pioneer of ETF issuers. Um, you know, most people think of ETF issuers, they think of the big names like BlackRock and Vanguard and Vesco, State Street. Matt, uh, knows that business all too well. His experience in ETF dates back to the 90s, I would imagine, early 2000s. Uh, I mean, whenever, you know, 93, I think SPY came yeah. out. And, I mean, I'm an active trader, so we were trading that. And, I wanted know, to hit you up on that because you, you came into the ETF, you said some point something changed and you said, you know what, this working in an office business is not for me. I, I got to do this myself or something along those lines. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and that's happened a lot of times in my life. I mean, whenever, uh, you know, you want something done right, typically you got to end up doing it yourself. But I started out as a financial advisor. Uh, we left the brokerage industry in 2003, formed my own company, and always been a pretty active trader. And I'd go to these industry conferences, meet guys like you, hear about all the great stuff you could do, go back to the Fidelities and the Schwabs and be like, hey, can I trade with this guy? They're like, uh, no, you're stuck with us. I'm like, well, I don't wanna be stuck with you. <laughs> well, okay, you can trade with this guy, but you gotta pay us a ton of money. It's like, all right, that sucks. Um, and then in 2015, I met someone in the trading business who said, why don't you just take your strategies and put them in ETFs? And I'm kind of a, you know, ready, aim, fire type. So I think I probably had my first ETFs out a couple of months after that. I uh, thought it was a great idea. Um, so we did that, that was 2015. And then I probably reinvented our firm about five times since then. Um, and we'll probably do it another 10 or 20 times before I'm done. Well, let's hope not. Let's hope you get the perfect recipe I mean, it's, right now. Yeah, but it, it's fun, and and I, you know, and also I think the the benefit of being small, nimble, the only decision maker is I can wake up in the morning, and be like, you know, that sounds like an interesting idea. Let's do it. Well, your timing's good because we recently had a conversation with Mike Castino, uh, who helps people bring products to market. There's a lot of people that do this, but we recently had Mike on, and we talked about some of the things that are behind the scenes. And here we have you coming in right on the heels of that as someone who said, no, I'm not, you know, a trillion dollar asset manager with, yeah. with all these lawyers. Right, exactly, but I have an idea and there's nothing legally or structurally in my way that says I can't do it myself. And so you've just, you didn't even see a, a wall. You just said, no, there's a, there's a legal path for me to launch my own product. I know exactly what it's gonna cost. I know how to do it. I paid attention at these conferences and in these conversations and you're in the market. Now, I have to ask, because we talk about this a lot, you've built it. How do you get them to come? Because one of the conversations we've had with our guests and we've had with many people, as you know, is, is the term distribution. It's incredibly important. It comes up in every, in every discussion. How do you, as a manager, get people to look at your products and commit to what you have such high conviction on in your head? Yeah, and, and that's the key question. And I've got people coming to me, you know, it, almost like one person a day, hey, I've got an idea, I wanna collaborate with you. And I end up talking them out of it because that's the key thing. It's the marketing side of it. And you know, people call, oh, I've got an idea, it, it crushes the market. You know what, nobody cares. So, you know, I think it's, it's a lot of things, but if you're not a BlackRock of Vanguard, you know, how do you get your first you know, whatever it is where you're break even. And on our platform, it's about 20 million. So where's your first 20 million gonna come from? So I think, first off, it's buzz. You want people to be talking about it. So if you're launching the S&P 499, nobody cares about that. There's no buzz around that. So, you know, we did SARC, a lot of buzz. We did SGIM, a lot of buzz. So there, there's a common denominator there, and we're working on 2X Bitcoin right now 
lot of buzz, the 2X long short Tesla, NVIDIA. So things where the media, social media, all that is gonna pick it up without you even trying. How do you create buzz then? Because I'll, I'll give you, Sark was great in terms of buzz. And I'm not picking sides, because I actually, I have a lot of, ton of respect for Kathy Woods and her team at sure. Arc, and, and, the, and the work they put into their to research and all of that. But also I have a ton of respect for the market in general, as do you, saying, look, things revert, things happen. There's, there's every reason to have a long product, there is to have a short product, because you can time the market differently and use it as a tool. Did you make the buzz for Sark or did that happen on its own because someone was like, oh, someone's going against Kathy, you know, uh, how does that work? I mean, it's so it, it's a little of both. I think no, you need to have a product that's going to create its own, but it helps that, I mean, I know all the reporters in the ETF space, you know, I know a lot of the financial reporters not in the ETF space. So, you know, I'm able to reach out to them as well. But if I were reaching out to them with S and P four ninety nine, they're gonna, you know, Matt, we don't yeah, care don't about that. About but if I'm reaching out to them, hey, we're shorting Kathy Wood, it's like, oh wow, that's interesting. Let, let, let's go, let's talk about that. And you know, same thing on social media. I've got, you know, like I don't know, eighty five hundred Twitter followers. I'm in six different discords. I don't even know what a Discord is, but <laughs> you know, so you know, I'm talking to people already but you still need something that is gonna you know have a life of its own as well so but so if i'm hearing you correctly matt tuttle not the guy that has 500 salespeople knocking on doors someone who actually rather relies on technology to create the buzz in a sense social media actual media you know and CNBC, then also di digital marketing i think is really important you want people to be able to find your stuff who aren't seeing the buzz, um, you know, so we focus on those three things, traditional PR, social media, and digital marketing. But again, it's gotta be a product that people are gonna be interested in in that realm. Either it's got the buzz, or it's something that's really, really timely, um, or it's something that just fills a need that either isn't filled very well or people don't realize is a need, but you have a pathway where you can say, hey, look, this is a need, this is why. Right, and it's funny with 3,400 or whatever it is, products available and seemingly creative ideas coming to market every week or every month, you'd think that we're, we're running out of things to invent and that's definitely not the case. No, definitely and not. Now, one thing, and I hope this doesn't, you know, this come out as a sore subject or whatever, but when when someone like you or someone's listening to this and saying, you know what, I, I, I really appreciate them sharing this. What are some of the things that are hidden behind the scenes that people might not know about? And I'm gonna touch on something that I think you have some personal experience with is protecting your IP, protecting your idea. You have passionate idea, you bring something to market, it sticks, you create the buzz, but structurally somewhere along the line, someone somehow it changed. So is there advice you can give to potential entrants into the market to say, hey, look, there are advantages of joining a trust. There are advantages to creating your own. There are cost savings and there are cost inefficiencies. And there's, you know, there's all of these things, but if you had to give someone advice on how to protect the idea and potentially the asset raising and the buzz around a product, what, what might you say to someone? Yeah, so I think the key thing there, because, you know, they, this is not rocket science. Uh, you know, we were the first people to do, for example, 2X on Tesla and NVIDIA, and it was kind of like the atomic bomb, where you knew at some point everyone else was going to figure it out, and they did. But so to me, the key, you want to be the first mover. And to do that, you want to be constantly thinking of ideas, which I am constantly doing, but then once you have an idea, you want to move quickly. Again, like I said before, you know, ready, fire, aim. You know, when we filed 2X Bitcoin, 2X long and short spot Bitcoin, we did it. We didn't know our ticker symbol. We didn't know our exchange. We didn't know our custodian. We didn't know anything. We basically filed the prospectus with as little as possible to get it through because we knew, it's, and we did it before spot was even approved. Right. Because we knew it as soon as spot was approved, a whole bunch of other people were going to do it. So I think you've got to be first. You've got to be willing to move quickly. 
that means taking risk. You know, there is cost to this stuff. And from a cost standpoint, you, you know, you talked about your own trust, another trust out there. And, and we've, I've had people willing to give me their trust, sell me their trust, set up a trust. We found a partner that is the cheapest out there. We've got an entrepreneurial trust council that works for us. Look at your cost structure. So for me, like I said, depending on expense ratio, 15 to 20 million is break even which is in a lot of things a doable number if you're doing the math and it's like 75 you know that that that's a that's a tough one and you're going to be bleeding for a while most likely before you get there yeah i'd say i mean i look i mean it not being on your side of the business but being around people that are 15 to 20 seems like the lower end of, of whatever and, and that's with. why we never did our own trust it's like well i mean if, if we can do break even here and again we have a great attorney who's willing to work with us and you know, it just doesn't make sense to spend the money and the, and the time. I mean, I'm an idea and a marketing guy. I don't need to be running a trust. So getting into, and I appreciate your, your honesty there. So, so in terms of, you know, what to avoid, but um, let's talk about product really quick. You recently launched, uh, you mentioned your 2X products up and down, uh, the single stock exposure, but obviously the ETF of ETF kind of comes into play. You recently launched a regional bank inverse fund, uh, 2X, 2X inverse? 2X inverse Cree, yes. So, so KRE is the State Street Regional Bank ETF. Your 2X inverse, the daily return, is that yes, right? Yes, correct. And so how does, how, does that, how does a product like that achieve that, you know, kind of exposure? Yeah, so it's purely swap based. So we have multiple counterparties, we write swaps, and every day we've got to rebalance back to that 200% level. So, you know, from an investor standpoint, it's, it's very simple. We start out every day, you know, negative 2X Cree. Uh, from our standpoint, it's just making sure that we maintain that exposure and have it into the end of the day. Yeah, just so everyone knows, traders like us, we, we put, we shorten everything we can. So when you say 2X Cree, what we're really saying is we're two times inverse the KRE. So you'll you'll hear people like us do that a lot and right. it moves traders very speak. quickly as traders speak. We we shorten as much as we can. But basically, so what I'm hearing correctly is the swap counterparty just needs to make sure that at the close of business every day, they're maintaining, however they choose to do so, 2X the inverse exposure of KRE. So, so they can either be short the ETF, they can be, if they choose to, Short something else, they can, but yeah, you know, in a perfect world, it's short KRE yes. um, exposure. Uh, how's that been going? I mean, this is, I mean I, we've noticed good volume. So on the trading desk, we noticed uh, the spreads have tightened up, and we've noticed the volumes have picked up, the assets have gone up. Um, but that's just our observations from the trading desk internally. Uh, yeah, with your so team. I mean, it's been going well, and the timing has been great. I think one of the other things that makes me unique is I'm also a trader. So I sit around all day and, and, and I'm trading my own account. So kind of an inconvenience being here at 10, but that's okay. <laughs> there were trades I wanted to do this morning. Um, but, you know, so I was shorting the regional banks last year. And one of the things I noticed was that if you look at the components of Cree, there are only a small handful that are really easily shortable. The rest of them, the puts are awful, the, they're hard to borrow. And I'm sitting there like, there should be an inverse Cree, and, and there wasn't. So I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm gonna make it, because I wanna trade it. And you know, we were, I, and, and I knew that the regional banking crisis from last year wasn't over. We were a couple of weeks early. We launched in mid-January, and then you've got the NYCB news. Um, you know, they look like they may be circling the drain. And everyone's going, oh, you know, that's, that's, you know, one bank, no big deal. And they said that last year. They said it in 2008. It's never one bank. So, yeah, the trading volume has picked up a lot. And I expect as other dominoes start to fall, because, I mean, these guys are not too big to fail. And so, you know, you're gonna see more of these go under. And to me, this is the most liquid way to play that. And, and in terms of the, the, the bank, if, you know, I was gonna say, they're not too big to fail, but like, does that create the buzz in itself? Is it the regional bank structure or, or regional bank 
potential headlines and tail events or whatever you don't call it a tail event anymore because you kind of expect it to happen. Right. But but um, does that create the buzz or do you just or from a marketing perspective, do you and your team try to marry your availability in the market now to the opportunity as so it arises? It, yeah, and, and that's where the digital marketing comes in. It's and also the the social media where I'm constantly, hey guys, you know, look at this, look at that. But the digital comes in where when NYCB is in the news, I'm calling up my digital guys and saying, bump up our spend. And NYCB, New York Community Bank, those are all search terms. So somebody Googles NYCB, boom, escrow. Interesting. So yeah, you want to marry it to that buzz as much as possible. You know, reporters writing articles about regional banks. You know, the other news that just happened over the weekend, Zion Bank is being removed from the S&P. So I'm hitting up reporters, you know, by the way, yeah, NYCB, but all these index managers have to sell Zion now, and Zion is a big one. Yeah. That, I mean, that's going to leave a mark. Do you think that making you more successful than others in your, in your seat might be uh, your ability to identify what should be highlighted to these marketing agents? I'm assuming that some of these some of these digital marketing agents they wouldn't know they don't know yeah. your space or what's in your head. So if you don't tell them, hey Zion or hey you know whatever community bank is failing, they don't know to exactly. add the hashtag. And, and I think that's where being a trader helps. Yeah. So I'm watching the market every day. I write a bunch of different market newsletters. You know, so I'm I'm sitting there watching the screens, seeing all the news. Again, being in all these discords. So I know what's going on and I can jump on it pretty quick. And I think that qualifies you as nimble for sure, because I have a feeling if yes. you worked for a, you know, a large, one of the top large global asset managers and you said, let's ping the digital content teams and go with this, it would have to hit 69 levels it, of approval. It helps if there's uh, one, yeah. one decision maker yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that's me. And, you know, we can move extremely quickly on stuff, which again, in a bunch of different areas, to me is extremely important. Yeah, you're gonna make some mistakes, but as long as you don't make an irrevocable mistake, yeah, I would move fast. Yeah, stick to the rules and stick to your conviction and, and you're good to go. Yeah. In the interest of time, I'd love to get you back to your desk, do some more trading, of course. Uh, <laughs> talk to me about T-Rex. This is an interesting collaboration, if you will, with Tuttle. Yeah, um, so this was a collaboration with us and the guys at Rex Shares to create an entirely new ETF brand, which I don't think anyone's ever done before. Um, and again, another thing unique about, I think of myself as an ETF entrepreneur. You know, there's no, this is our business plan, we're sticking with it. When opportunities come up, they come up. And all of the people who are not, you know, State Street, BlackRock, Vanguard, are all competing for that 5% of the market or whatever it is that's left. And to me, why are we all killing each other? Why not collaborate? If we've got good ideas, we were gonna do 2X long short NVIDIA. They were gonna do 2X long short NVIDIA. Instead of going like this, it's like, you know what? We've got, you know, we, it, one plus one equals four with us where they've got a lock and load on retail guys with their micro sectors. I've got a lock and load with stuff that I've done in the past. You know, I know a lot of these retail guys personally. They're great at digital marketing. Let's work together. Let's create a brand. Now we have seven products, and again, we got the the two bitcoins out there, and we're we're talking about some more. How's it going? Otherwise, are you rated double thumbs up? Success? I mean, so exactly as planned. Four and... months in, and we're almost five hundred million. Wow. So That's I mean, great. I'll I'll t I mean, you know, you see some of these bitcoins getting five hundred million in in thirty minutes, but for a smaller guy like me, yeah. 500 million in four months, I'll take it. Yeah, I mean, most a, a lot of ETF issuers come to market, early ETF issuers or, or, or new newbies, if you will, they're, they're thinking, how do I raise my first 50 million? How do I raise my first 100 million? And then they're thinking in the year. So to raise a half a billion you know, inside of six months is historically, uh, a, certainly an applaudable achievement yeah. for we, ETF we, launches. We were gonna do a press release at 100 and the guys at Rex were like, eh, no, no. Let's not do it. And I'm thinking, oh, we should. And I, thank God we didn't do it. Cause, and, then, and then I put something on Twitter at 300, and you know now it's close to 500. So it's, yeah, it's been great. Well, you'd have a billion dollar party. I hope to get the invite. The billion dollar party, I, I think we will definitely have, okay. and you will definitely get the invite. 
Fantastic. Well, I hope you get there before this airs. Um, Me too. I want to thank you again for coming in, Matt. It's always a pleasure to chat with you personally, and it's really nice to have you on the On the Vine Murray ETF podcast. Um, you know, we've got a close eye on all of your products, and we will continue to do so cool. going forward as you grow. Um, we're cheering for you. Yeah. So thank you for having me. as well. We'll talk to you soon.